I've been in the North West over 30 years. I've been to uh, Southport many a time and uh, it's one of my favourite places uh, up in this part of the world. It's, I, I just love that main street. It's just absolutely fantastic. Lord street. Uh, indeed. And um, so, yeah, no, I enjoy it very much and I've been down that coastline many a time. I am leaving North West tonight uh, at the end of next week, so it is a time for reflection and looking back and so on. Because the big move to Salford um, was going to be in um, sort of March, I think, so uh, that seemed the, the right time to go. The BBC asked me, because Salford got back to October, would I stay to the end of September? So I said yes, as long as I honoured the commitments I'd already oh, made. So uh, they said, fair enough, so Ranveer is doing the programme today. Uh, for me at lunchtime and I'm going back to do the evening oh, programme right. with her. Yeah. Funnily enough, next week on the program, they have uh, very kindly said to me, you can do any four interviews that you want, that you most want it, uh, you choose. Um, so I've gone for four, uh, and one of those uh, is because everyone always says, um, who's impressed you most of all the people you've ever interviewed, who's impressed you most, and what's been your best interview? And uh, they probably expect some of the sort of big names I've interviewed. I've interviewed every Prime Minister since Ted Heath. That's eight in a row, uh, from Ted Heath in 1973 to David Cameron. I've interviewed them all. Uh, I've interviewed people like Paul McCartney and Jeff Richard and George Best and all these great people have probably been very lucky. But the um, interview that meant the most to me, and I've just repeated the interview um, to go out next week, um, was with a, an unbelievable remarkable and inspirational lady uh, who lives um, in Liverpool and she's called G Walker and G Walker's son Anthony uh, was murdered uh, in a park I think in Heighton uh, six years ago uh, when two absolute thugs uh, drove an axe into his head just because he was black and six months after that murder I interviewed G and it was the most fantastic emotional yet loving caring interview you've ever heard in which um, G she, she talked about the terrible pain she had and always would have but that she had forgiven the killers uh, because she was a devout Christian and she genuinely had forgiven them genuinely believed that if they showed enough remorse they would eventually be allowed back into society they should be allowed back into society and she set up the Anthony Walker Foundation to try and remove hatred from our mid uh, from our midst and preach um, diversity and equality um, uh, which is having a, a considerable effect and I went back to interview her just the other day for a, a, a interview will go out next week and it was again the most moving and inspirational um, thing I've done again so uh, there you are G Walker is, um, is my number one interview and person You can't, well, you can't work for 15 years in a yeah. program like that and not miss it. I mean, it's been fantastic uh, the whole time. Fan amazing stories in this region, uh, amazing people to talk to and interview, fantastic sport, all the premiership mm -hmm. clubs we've got here, uh, cricket, just come county champions, Lancashire, after 77 years, and I love my cricket and boxing, Amir Khan, Ricky Hatton. I mean, it's just been phenomenal all around here, as well as all the heavy politics and things. Well, I, I hope and pray that they survive, because I started on a local paper in Northern Ireland, the East Antrim Times and Larne, the best uh, 18 years almost of my life, certainly the best training anyone could ever have for journalists to work on a local newspaper. So many of them now go to college and come out with a degree and then try and get into radio and television. The best thing is a local newspaper, and it's tough times and it's hard going. But I still think there's a big interest in the community by people who live in it, particularly the older they get and I just hope that newspaper editors work on it, provide them with stories, enough stories that they're interested to read in their area and then hopefully they'll survive because we need them and we need them to breed the future of big journalists of our time.